Okay, just wanted to take a couple of minutes to walk you through some of the features and updates in the latest edition, the eighth edition of Understanding Photovoltaics. So first what we'll do is we'll take a walk through the table of contents. Now, as you can see, the beginning of the book, uh, fairly typical in textbooks, you'll go into an introduction of photovoltaics, covers what's happening as far as governmental incentive programs, growth of the industry, some issues around connecting to the grid, the history of photovoltaics, electrical codes and standards. We've tried to expand just beyond the National Electrical Code, talking about some of the international codes as well, as well as um, the various service marks and uh, certification programs. Then we get into the functionality of the panels themselves, how cells are made, uh, how they're rated. You get into some of the things like IV curves. We jump down into types of photovoltaic systems. We do do uh, quite a lot of uh, work on the interactive systems, the AC coupled and DC coupled systems. That's because these systems more and more are uh, becoming important within the industry and haven't really been covered in past textbooks that well. We get into some basic electrical concepts. It's not really an electrical course, but you need to have a background to understand for photovoltaics. Then we jump into the meat and potatoes of the systems, uh, all of the different products. We walk from the solar panels through things like junction boxes, combiner boxes, wiring the systems, disconnects, inverters, quite a lot on inverters battery banks, some of the new technology involved in battery systems, then again into AC coupled systems, how you would design batteries for those. We then get into how to conduct a site survey so you can walk the student through the process of determining if the location is suitable for solar. So we talk about, you know, angle, azimuth, locating the system on the site, locating the balance of systems. Then we jump into the designing of your system, quite a lot on um, sizing the array, sizing string inverters, how to select your inverters. Um, we get into quite a lot about smart inverters and how California Rule 21 has changed things, the UL 1741, uh, designing the wiring system, which can be quite complex, and jumping into the installation of the balance of systems, both the mechanical and the electrical. So we're just trying to walk you through the table of contents here to give you a sense of just what's involved in this program. Another feature of the textbook is that it does integrate with an online training program that follows this uh, exactly, follows the format and gives a series of narrated slides that uh, are a companion to this. So if you want to use that narrated program within your classroom, that works quite nicely. Or if you're a student and you want to work independently, you can use the textbook as, along with that integrated program. We'll, we'll feature that just a little bit later on. Each chapter begins with the chapter objectives. And you'll see that uh, highlighted terms are indicated so that if you're wanting to reference back to a specific term, fairly easy to find. Try to lay out the system so it follows a logical order, um, very intuitive. Lots of white space so that your eye doesn't just get overwhelmed with gray text. We've got quite a lot of illustrations and graphs uh, that will help with some of the understanding, as well as one of the very practical things within the industry. Um, oftentimes we're talking about products that the student may not be familiar with. So it's nice to see a picture of what they're dealing with as they're seeing it. Another feature of this textbook is it has been updated as of 2020. So much of the information that you find in some of the older textbooks is so out of date that uh, in this rapidly evolving industry, it, it's, it's really quite disappointing because many of the products, many of the codes, many of the standards really have only been around for a couple of years. So if you're using a textbook that's older than that, you're going to be woefully unprepared here. Also, at the end of each chapter, there are review questions. Now, the students can answer these. The instructor will have a key to this, but the students will not, hopefully. So it's uh, functional there uh, within your classroom. And it's also integrated with the online program so that you can utilize that as well.
So we wander back through, we're seeing various chapters. Uh, we try and talk about some of the new technologies that are out there like perk, bifacial, some of the bus bar, uh, bus bar changes, split cells, bifacial cells, which is a new innovation. So um, again, this industry is changing so quickly that we're really trying to keep this textbook updated uh, really on an ongoing basis so that new technologies are highlighted as they occur and as they become prevalent within the market. But I think you'll find it's a very, very complete coverage of all of the residential uh, aspects of designing and installing a system. Uh, hopefully by the end of this program, your students will really have all the tools that are necessary for them to go out and design and install a traditional residential system. So pretty much anything 10 kilowatt hours or less, uh, 10 kW or less, uh, is really where we're focusing on this. We've tried to focus quite a bit on how the PV system will impact the electrical grid. So the student needs to have an understanding of single phase electric, three phase electric, uh, what the various choices are in products, and how the integration of solar into the grid will affect not only the grid, but also how the grid affects the solar. Another thing that we've tried to highlight within the text is internationalizing it a bit. Um, this is an international industry. So often you'll see, for instance, wire gauge referred to as AWG, American wire gauge, but most of the world refers to it as uh, you know square millimeters. So we're trying to just show what are the equivalents within this so that if you're referencing a European document, for instance, because we do look at products that are from all over the world. So we want to know, you know, what is that equivalent? What standards exist in Europe that we have to conform with? What standards occur in Canada? Uh, it's a it's a globe. So let's let's expand our knowledge a bit to uh, the rest of the world just outside of the um, United States. We get a little bit too inwardly focused in this country. Talking a bit about wire colors, wire sizes, how to design the various types of inverters, uh, not only the smart inverters, which are new on the market and increasingly important, but then we also talk a bit about uh, how, you know, they do change the grid, California Rule 21, and, and what that means when selecting an inverter, you know, the new UL 1741SA standard that most jurisdictions are now complying with. The evolution of battery technology is increasingly important in this industry. So we try and talk about uh, not only the traditional deep cycle lead acid batteries, but uh, a lot more on lithium ion and how to charge lithium ion. Uh, also some of the emerging battery technologies such as flow batteries or um, saltwater batteries, or even some of the legacy such as the, um, the uh, Edison batteries are important. Then of course, we're gonna get into the site assessment and how you would do a proper site assessment. So we find that uh, you need to figure out the angle, the azimuth of an array. And one of the things that we try and really focus on in this textbook is the practical nature of designing and installing. For instance, a lot of older textbooks will focus a lot on the trigonometry involved in calculating angles or shading between the various rows. But most installers today have an app on their phone. They can just lay the phone up on the roof to determine the angle, or they can just plug the numbers into an app and determine how far apart they should put their uh, solar panels. So there's really no reason to get into some of the, into the woods on some of these things. There's skills that are necessary for designing the software for these. But in a very practical perspective, uh, the installer doesn't need to have those kind of skill sets. So there's plenty out there to have to understand to do this job properly without focusing on some of the minutia or trying to memorize um, reference numbers because the installer today is going to have a smartphone. If they need to know what particular code they're referencing when they talk about setback requirements or, or they talk about rapid shutdown, well, look it up. You can, you can find that reference number. There's 
really no need to memorize that. We'll, we'll reference them here, but uh, it's not the primary focus. It's a very practical approach to how this works. Also talking about some management tools such as uh, clipping and, and how you can um, essentially set your ratios between the inverter size and the array size. Uh, so, so these are terms and techniques and, and practices that are very, very prevalent. Uh, also, we're getting into some remote site assessments. Um, it, it, as you hopefully are finding out, this is a lot more than just, you know, sticking panels on a rack and bolting them down. Of course, we need to know that, but we're trying to provide a well-rounded experience for the students so they have a good understanding of all of the very practical aspects of installing and designing a residential system. Safety is a big issue that we try and focus on as well. And now, you know, of course, we've talked about some of the regulations involved in doing the project safely and the role of OSHA on a job site. But we also want to talk about the personal protective equipment that you need, uh, the fire setbacks that are required, climbing safety issue, electrical safety issue, even uh, hazards involved such as um, heat stroke, and um, you know, dealing with, with unusual weather conditions. So we're trying to really, again, give the installer information that they can use so that they're productive on the job the first day that they uh, show up for the job. Now, when you get to the back of the book, we've got some formulas, but we also have uh, a listing of acronyms. You know, this particular industry loves its acronyms and they're sometimes hard to keep track of. So there's a handy little reference in the back of the book that will tell you what these various acrony acronyms mean. And, and hopefully that will be of help. All of the figures and the charts and diagrams are referenced. And of course, the electronic version of this textbook is fully searchable, but uh, the paper version, we have indexing so that you can look up specific terms uh, throughout the text. Now, as I mentioned, this is integrated in with an online program, and that online program follows the same format of the textbook. It can be used uh, independent of classroom instruction. For instance, with the COVID-19, we're finding a lot remote learning opportunities and requirements or it can be used within the classroom and simply follow through the program so that it can be instructor led in the classroom and then if a student misses a session or whatever they can review it on their own independently their end of chapter quizzes uh, they do provide immediate feedback to the student as to whether or not they've received it it also references the specific page number where that question ha can be found and gives a little bit more detail um, in the answer. And often we've integrated videos that will de, you know, explain further uh, the answer and how it was derived for the mathematical questions. It does show all of the uh, solving uh, equations and how the answer was derived specifically. And also the instructor can track the progress. So that's a handy tool within your classroom management. Now each chapter, each section has a, a series of PowerPoint slides. And as you advance through them, they are in fact narrated. A combiner box is utilized when we're taking multiple strings and combining them so that the wire that leaves this box is only one circuit. All right, that gives a good example of the audio. Now you'll also find that uh, many of these have integrated videos. So if the student wants to explore a little bit more in depth, they can simply click on that video available icon and it will um, jump to a video that's related to this content. Today, I would love to get the combiner box installed. Now the combiner box is gonna go on the back of the array. Okay, that's enough of that. I think you get a good idea about how that works. And then as you advance through the slides, you know, the audio can either play automatically 
or you can control that through the audio controls on each slide. Now there are over 500 of these slides in here. So I hope that gives you a good indication of how this program works and that you'll find this uh, of help in your classroom or if you're just studying it on your own.